Hey everybody, Engineer Coffee, welcome back to the channel. Behind me is the Iris door that uh, we used in our preview video, and I wanted to go ahead and do a little tutorial of how it was built. Alright, it may look a little bit complicated, but it's actually all just linear movement. All of these uh, triangles are just sliding, and they just meet in the middle at a perfect point. Alright, so the operation is really easy. It's just these three pistons on each of these uh, pedals that pushes it to close the door and open it. And that is it. So let's go ahead and jump into a creative world and I will show you how we build this. All right, here we are in a creative world on the earth lake, just so I can get a flat ice lake. It just makes building a lot easier. All right, so the size of the octagon here was dictated by the Kestrel ship itself. So we've got uh, a 21 by 21 octagon. And so the door mechanism is gonna need to come from this center over here and extend over uh, 11, 12 blocks uh, to get out of the way. And so for that, we need at least three pistons. We're going to have a piston that is too long and it extends four blocks and then we're going to have three of those so that puts it out another 12 and we'll have a block on the end to connect to now if we we're to just put pistons directly on there and we we're build a door off of it it would either end uh, right here at this line or right here at this line unless we used like a half block but uh, instead we're going to go ahead and push the entire door mechanism back a half a block so it can all meet in the middle here because we have an odd number uh, octagon. If you had an even number, it would make this process a lot easier, but uh, odd numbers are a lot nicer for symmetry, so we're going to meet right here in the middle. Alright, so to do that, we're going to extend out another couple blocks so we can put a piston in, give it an attachment point. Let's go ahead and put one here on the bottom just to get into the voxels. All right, let's go ahead and put that extension piston on and a block on the end. Okay, so pistons are actually 2.16 long when they're compressed. All right, so here for the extension, we don't need to come out 1.25, which is half a block. They're two and a half meters long. Uh, 1.25, we actually need to minus out the 0.16. And so that puts it at 2.09. Go ahead and reverse that guy out. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a block and extend this guy all the way over here to the frame. Just so I can get rid of all of this stuff so it's out of our way. And then I'm going to extend this guy out. Okay, we're going to extend that out so I can get a landing gear here. To make that secure because this guy doesn't need to move anymore now that we have the distance set i'm going to go ahead and just hide these uh pistons on the terminal here same with the landing gear let's go ahead and turn auto lock and parking off on it there we go now we'll have a clean terminal list when we do our doors okay, and then we're going to have our door extension we need one two three of those and a block on the end and right, so i got all of these renamed so we can adjust them all at the same time let's go ahead and extend them out a little bit faster than just reversing all right, and we knew we would be sticking out a little bit too far because we can extend out uh, 10 meters instead of coming into this half block. So we need to come back a half a block. Plus we've got all of the uh, stack tolerance here that we got 0.16 three times. Let's go ahead and subtract that out. All right, so we need to come back the 1.25 plus 0.16 three times. And that puts it at 1.73 that we need to come back, but we need to do it with all three pistons. So we're going to divide that number by three. And that gets us 0.576 repeating. So we're going to minus that from our 10 meter full extension. And that gets us 9.423. All right, let's put that 9.423 into the uh, extension here. There we go. We'll reverse it and we'll reverse it back. So it actually gets to that value. Uh, I have build info mod, so I see a little bit more than just vanilla. I highly recommend that mod. It helps a lot with this automation stuff to be able to see. And then you can also access build vision and make a lot of settings changes instead of having to go into a terminal every time. All right, and that should put us right in line with a half block. So let's go ahead and put a half block here. All right, there we go. Yeah, you can see we're a little bit short. Uh, we can need to come out just a bit more to get that perfectly in line. Um, so let's go ahead and just make a little bit of an adjustment. And it's probably because the uh, distance actually isn't exactly 0.16. It's like 0.158 something, something, something. I don't know why Keen did it that way, but it's, uh, it's a very odd number. Right, so let's just bump that up to 426. There we go. I think that is perfect. We're going to go with that. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of these extra blocks. All right, let's go ahead and build the door uh, panels. I just built these out of light armor panels. Uh, so let's use mirror mode here. We need to come out 12 blocks. We're going to come back two because we're going to use some angled slopes. Okay, another thing you'll want to do is make sure we have inertial tensors set on all of these uh, pistons. That'll make the wobbling a lot less. Okay, and then we're going to use these 2 by one armor slopes here. All right, there we go. We got a 2 by one slope all the way to here. Uh, we could go further, but I know what's coming. So we're going to go ahead and clip that off, and then we're going to get a 45 degree triangle. There it is. 
We're going to put that on there. And that is the door shape we need to get. Uh, we're clipping off this corner because the doors that are going to be at 45 degrees need that clearance. All right, there we go. That is our first door mechanism. We just need to repeat it three more times. So let's go ahead and copy this guy around. Let's see, we are 11 blocks from that point there. So one, two, back, and then we come out 11 blocks. Go ahead and turn off the mirror on that one, just because we're not uh, symmetric that way. We're radial symmetric, but uh, we don't have that option in Space Engineers. All right, we don't have a partial copy, but let's go ahead and bring this guy in. Makes the pasting a lot easier. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right here. Let's just get a copy. Uh, and then we'll paste this guy back in and get a merge block to make sure it's secure. Okay, there we go. We're merged back together. Got our blocks on there. Let's go ahead and bring this guy up. All right, well, it doesn't want to attach. I have a feeling it is the landing gear. Let's go ahead and just drop it over there. Delete that guy off and try again. There we go. It was the landing gear. Okay, paste our other one in. Put down our landing gear. Go, paste the last one. And one more landing gear. All right, now we have all of the iris door. Let's go ahead and reverse it. Here we go. You can see them all moving in unison. You need to make sure that you move them all at once. Otherwise, they'll pinch on each other and get stuck. Well, they definitely need to move in unison. All right, there we go. They come to a perfect point there and touch, and it looks wonderful. So there is the first half of our door. Right, let's paste another one of these out here. Let's get a battery on there real quick. I want to go ahead and extend these guys out. Just go ahead and repaint that pedal just so it's easier to see. All right, so this guy's going to come in basically at a 45 degree angle like this. Let's go ahead and try to plop it down as close as possible. There we go. Something like that. I have damage off. That will help. Uh, let's get some weight on this end, maybe. Oh, it's the battery. Batteries are heavy. That's why. Okay, now that the batteries are off, it nestles down. So now you can kind of see we're pretty close. Not too bad. Uh, and this will get us pretty close where we need to go. Uh, let's check my 45 degree. Uh, yeah, actually that wasn't bad. Uh, so we need to have an extension out. And instead of having this guy at uh, a 90 degree, we don't need him anymore. All right, so we need a rotor underneath here. So we just need to come off as close as possible where we need to go. So here looks right. We're going to come out this direction. And obviously we're not going to be perfectly in line uh, with our piston there. Uh, this guy needs to come back this way anyway, because he's sticking out. All right, so we need a rotor about right here, but it's not going to be exactly perfect. So we need to take that out again. We're going to back it off just a couple. Let's go up because we're in the voxel. We're going to put another extension piston just like we have on the other ones. A plate there. And then this will be where our rotor goes. Let's go ahead and get rid of this guy for now. Let's go ahead and paste him back over there for safekeeping. There we go. All right, so we need a rotor there, an extension piston there, and then a block on the top of it. All right, before we rotate that rotor, let's go ahead and copy this guy. I've got a retracted version of it, and we'll go ahead and get it placed on here. I think we're going to need to do it, yeah, outward this way. There we go. So we're at zero degrees. We actually need to come over this direction to 225 degrees, but we'll go negative. All right, so our rotor lower limit, it needs to go to negative 135. And we'll see that guy rotate around. Okay, perfect. There we go. All right, I renamed these three pistons here to the 45 degree. We're going to go ahead and extend all of them right now. Go ahead and reverse all of those. All right, here's why you can see that I clipped that corner is because this guy is in line. All right, so we need to get this point over to this point here. And we can do that with a little bit of trial and error. Um... Or we can do the math, or however we want to do that. Let's get a control panel, though. All right, I'm going to stick an antenna right here so we can remote into it. Let's come over here. Now we want to find this extension piston, and let's drive it up a little bit uh, to get it over there. I think it's actually going to drive it this direction a little bit because it's a little bit off. There we go. I just did a one-meter extension that's pretty close. Yeah, it's decently close because this guy is actually going to pull back that way. All right, so let's bump it up to 1.1, maybe 1.2, and then we'll have to adjust the other piston as well. These guys will get a little bit longer than 9.42. Let's try 9.5. Okay, as you can see, we're getting a little bit closer. Um, so you can do this, guess and check, until you get kind of into that center point, or you can do the math. 
I have a CAD program, so I went ahead and did the math. So let's go ahead and put those numbers in. So let's see, for this guy, the extension actually needs to be 1.534. And then these extensions here, instead of 9.5, they're actually 9.557. We'll go ahead and give it a reverse and a back. That seems to stabilize it. But there you go. You can see from a top-down view, we are right in line. So math for the win there. Now that we have the naming and the value all that set, let's go ahead and delete this guy off. Uh, actually, might be able to get away with this. Okay, we're gonna rotate that guy back out like that. Um, I don't know why it's so jittery. Shouldn't be that bad. There we go. All right, now we just need to copy this guy over. We're gonna do the same thing we did last time. Let's just go ahead and delete this. Copy it to our clipboard. Put this block back and paste it in. There we go. We need to come one over and then seven blocks. One up and paste it in. Seven blocks, one up. Rotate it over and paste it in. One over, seven blocks, one up, and paste it. There we go. There is the other four pedals. Let's go ahead and rotate them in. There we go. We'll start swinging in. All right, there we go. We swung them in, and now what you'll notice is we've got a little bit of a gap here uh, between the two plates, and that's because rotors also stick up more than uh, a single block. If we put this here, you can see there's quite the... Uh, distance between this here and this one here. All right, there we go. We got a plate on the top of it. We can still lower the displacement a little bit to take care of some of that gap. I'm gonna go ahead and do it here in build vision so I can see it. So I can go to negative nine centimeters. I'm gonna go negative eight. I think that's more comfortable. There we go. That got that nice gap in there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that block and the plate. All right, now we have a nice gap here between our two plates uh, from our 45 degree and our straight. All right, now we have this guy set of where it needs to go. So we can actually put a landing gear on here to make it more stable as well. Now this one, instead of attaching to that side and trying to find a spot for it, I think this one is easier to just turn upside down and attach onto there. So let's go ahead and do that all the way around. Okay, there we go. Now we have landing gear all around the corners. Now we don't have to worry about the rotor rotation or the uh, piston extension here. It's locked into where it needs to go. Uh, leave it all connected because you need the power to go to those pistons and you want it all on one grid to be able to control it. Now we can take all of these iris pistons at 45 degrees and we can extend them out. These extension pistons are down here. We've got them set and where they need to go. So now we can turn them off of our HUD. Same thing with these rotors. And same thing with these landing gear. There we go. Now we only have these iris pistons on our uh, group here. They're all extended. Uh, let's go ahead and make a big group out of this. There we go. Now we got our iris pistons group. We can hide all of those because we want to make sure we move them all at once. Now if we come over here, we should see the tips of these really nicely put together. I mean, if you want to get pedantic, there's a little bit off there, a little bit of a gap. Or if you want to go in and try to find the value so it's a little bit tighter than that, uh, be my guess. But <laughs> for all intents and purposes, that is as tight as we need to get it. All right, so now all we need to do is just hop in a cockpit or get a button panel. Uh, to operate the door. I'm going to go ahead and put a cockpit in. I think that's easier. All right, let's go ahead and put that group of pistons here on our toolbar to reverse. All right, there you go. Now we have a completely linear movement iris door that opens up with uh, eight, eight arms. All right, now there's one more thing that I'd like to do. If you notice when we open this guy up, they all open at the same time. And that's great. But the blue doors on the 45 degree travel just a little bit more. So you'll notice the white stops. And then the blue continues just a tick further. So all we need to do with that, we could compensate the speeds, but uh, that is going to be very difficult. With the amount of difference that we have, we have 9.557 on those ones. And then these ones over here are 9.426. So all I'm going to do is take the 9.557 minus out the 9.426. That leaves 0 0.131. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to get these pistons that are the 45 degrees. And we're just going to change the minimum. Instead of being zero, it'll be the point one three one. Right, there we go. Now they should be traveling the exact same distance, which means they'll start and stop at the same time. And it'll just make that much more smooth of a door operation. All right, now we can just go ahead and paint them all the same color. I like to use the weld list, then you kind of don't see the seams. And that looks pretty good. All right, now we can actually start filling in the silo space here. All we need to do is just bring blocks all the way up. These uh, light armor panels are wonderful. The clearance on them is great. They can actually go all the way up. It doesn't cause any interference. Um, we can just 
put all the blocks on and it works perfect. Uh, here we're going to slope because we've got this guy to run across so we can't do the full block like it is. It needs to be these uh, sloped ones so the uh, piston can run by it. But I probably should have done that on the backside here anyway. But that's fine. You're probably not going to see it anyway. All right, now we've got all of that closed up. You can see how little light bleed we have. I'll go here and just turn off our lights. You can just see how dark it gets. It's pretty cool. All right, now for decorating the top, you probably want to bury this in the ground so you don't have to see all of the mechanisms here. All right, unfortunately here on the top, we can't get quite as precise. We can't get a block in there, obviously, because we've got the door. What you can go ahead and do is use these half slabs. And then we'll just put in these half block slopes here fill in the space. All right, on the silo build, I ended up replacing the octagon with a shape that was more like this with these two by one slopes to kind of follow the iris door just a little bit more. Uh, so it kind of turns it into a little bit of a weird shape. You got a three flat there, and then it's just two by one slope on the edges here. So the problem with doing it this way is we don't have a solid block to put underneath here anymore. So instead of those, what you have to do is put in these type of slopes. You have to find these two by one base panels and put them in like this. So you got a little bit of a gap there uh, that you end up seeing, but uh, if you get the lighting right, it's fine. So if you want to do it that way, there is the path to do it, uh, or you can do it the octagon and you get to use solid blocks. All right, we're going to go ahead and go back to the octagon. I think it's better. And then the other thing that you can do on the side here to try to close it in is you can use these armor panels. Obviously, we don't have a slope with these armor panels, so you kind of got to just uh, stair step it, but it restricts a lot of that light bleed coming through. Yeah, I think I prefer it more of a square like this to block it off. I think that just looks a little bit nicer. And then just fill in here with a bunch of half blocks. And there we go. And now it is all closed in. A little bit of a gap, but uh, you can play with lighting and other things in there if you want. There we go. Now we have a working iris door with blocks all around it. Uh, now you can bury this into the voxel and have a working silo. All right, hopefully you found this little mini guide on making an iris door helpful. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys later.